Hello. Today we look at the symbolism in Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea because there's always something hidden concealed under the surface. And no, this is not the case only with your co-worker who puts lots of makeup. It is the case with literature too. Now let's take a symbolic pickaxe and try to unearth the hidden meaning in The Old Man and the Sea. On the surface, it is the story of an old fisherman called Santiago and who hasn't been able to catch a single fish for almost three months, exactly 84 days. The first takeaway from this premise is how Hemingway goes for a different kind of hero, diametrically opposed to heroes in classical literature. And there is a reason for that. Heroes in classical literature were glorious, imposing, and they went on adventures for honour, for love, for revenge, for justice, for the acquisition of some magical items. They Examples are numerous, Odysseus, Hercules, Gilgamesh, Achilles. Hemingway's hero is the opposite of that. Hemingway's hero is the modern ordinary man. This modern man goes on an adventure to catch some fish he could sell so that he wouldn't starve. How unremarkable a motive that is. This is the condition of the modern man. This is a strong Nietzschean idea. For Nietzsche, the reason behind this is the modern man's hubris, his inacceptance of what he is, and Christianity. In the novella, there is a strong Christ image that Santiago embodies and that explains this condition. The modern man is subdued, unspectacular, meek, old and tired. Another contrast between classical heroes and Santiago is that classical heroes were always surrounded by a cast of worthy companions. This is not the case with Santiago. His only apprentice, Manolin, under the pressure of his parents, abandoned Santiago. So with a hope to catch some fish and to put an end to his barren streak, Santiago decides to venture further in the sea. His bait attracts a huge marlin. Santiago's boat and gear aren't designed for that bigger type of fish, but Santiago's experience and craftsmanship compensate for that and allow him to defeat the Marlin after a three-day Tyson battle. During the three days fight with the Marlin, Santiago's hands bleed. The lacerations on his wrists are similar to the lacerations Jesus suffers on the cross. This is an early Christ image that is continuously reinforced and used throughout the novella. Santiago attaches the huge fish to his boat and sails back ashore, but the smell of blood attracts sharks and Hemingway describes Santiago's reaction when he sees the sharks like this. Aye, he said aloud. There is no translation for this word, and perhaps it is just a noise such as a man might make, involuntary, feeling the nail go through his hands and into the wood. This is a strong image that likens Santiago to Jesus once again. Jesus on the cross, enduring pain to be reborn. Santiago does everything he can to fight the sharks off and to protect his prey, but at the end he can't. They devour every ounce of meat, leaving Santiago with nothing but a huge, useless carcass. Defeating the marlin and being defeated by the sharks epitomise man's relationship with nature. Our occasional triumphs over nature are illusory, momentary and unreal. Santiago battles the marlin, the struggle is long and taxing, and although he kills it and appears to have won, nature catches up to him and strips him of his delusive victory. The novella focuses on the relationship between nature and man. Man is born into nature. Nature predates man. It will also stay there after we die. Nature outpowers man. Nature is there before we're born and it doesn't care about what we want, what we need. It is there and will continue to be there after our death. It subdues our wills and desires. Distraught, tired and defeated, Santiago reaches the shore and goes home no better off than how he started, only a little more tired and with one more defeat under his belt. Santiago's journey mirrors the modern man's passage through life. To live is to battle insurmountable odds, to be occasionally fooled into thinking that there are battles we can win, only for life to deliver crushing blows, and at the end, we leave this world in the same state we entered it, not knowing a lot about it and being subdued by it. Up to this point, it is a very bleak tale, but Hemingway is not Pickett or Sartre or Zapfer or Mainlander. He's accustomed us to letting in a beacon of light that breeds some hope in Santiago's and man's miserable existence despite the tiredness and the disillusionment of a fruitless journey. Santiago doesn't give up on fishing. He regains his former apprentice who's been worried about him and waiting for his return. Santiago goes home, sleeps and is ready to 
to try his luck again when he's rested. The meatless carcass of the marlin he brings ashore is a symbol of his defeat, but it also elevates him in the eyes of the local community of fishermen. It is still the testament to a great adventure and a fight he won against the marlin. Regaining Manolin as an apprentice ensures continuity. Humans can have some hope through the passing of knowledge, the passing of experience. And while they can't defeat nature or life through the process of pain bearing and the passing of knowledge, they can catch some more marlins or win some more little battles. The way Santiago drags the mast is evocative of Jesus dragging the cross to Calvary. There is a recurring element of pain being essential for growth that we find in Hemingway's fiction and that is very similar to Dostoevsky. Now you can understand this as a vestige of the original sin or as a defining trait of being a human or as both. At the end of the novella, Santiago continues to dream of the same scene, where he's observing young lions playing at the shore of an African beach. This is a recurring dream and a happy thought that soothes Santiago. It is a reminder that this forceful nature is not always enemical to man, it can be comforting and bountiful. The lions are also young, they're full of life, and this youth is part of nature too. Life or nature is something that transcends us, it can violently hurt us, but it is also a source of power and nourishment. Now this dream that Santiago keeps having and that is inspired by a memory from his childhood foregrounds a incomprehension of nature, this force that engulfs us and that sometimes infuses us with energy and hope and sometimes subjects us to insurmountable suffering and pain. There is a lot we don't understand about this force, there is a lot we don't understand about nature, about our condition and this opens the door for many questions, many discussions whether this force, this nature is conscious is not conscious, what does it want, why is it that we have to go through all this pain, why is it that sometimes this nature gives us force and nourishment and sometimes torments us to the brink of sadism. Now these were some ideas from the old man in the sea and this video has reached its end. Until we meet again, have a great day.